Quasar's slide transition component is another example of how Quasar has made simple operations that we do over and over again in day-to-day -day life. They've made it really, really easy to do. So check this out. If we have a Q dash button, and let's just say this is equal to show card. So this is a button that's going to show a card when it's clicked or hide it. So we might even change that to toggle card because sometimes it'll show it, sometimes it'll hide it. And then we can say showing is equal to the opposite of what showing is currently equal to. So that's basically an easy way to toggle a variable. And now I'm gonna yank ref out of here, come down here and say setup, and then return showing. Now we actually need that variable. So let's say showing is equal to a reference to, and we'll set that to false by default. Save it, and there's our button. Now, in order to show this video properly, it's gonna be a lot easier if I come up here and say column, and then items dash center. So that's just an easy way to basically say, everything will be shown down a column, and I want it centered horizontally inside of that column. We'll also add inside of here padding, just to sort of pad that out a little bit, makes it look better. Okay, now for the fun part. We can say Q dash slide dash transition. And then if I come in here and add a div, or let's use a Q dash card, and then a Q dash card dash section. I really love cards, they're fun to use with Quasar. We'll throw some lorem ipsum in there by typing in lorem and pressing tab. There we go, save that. And now we've got this card. And by default, it's gonna be visible, but if we say V dash if here, showing, we can basically say only show this card if showing is equal to true. And since this is wrapped in a Q slide transition, check it out. We get this really cool sliding transition that shows the card with no extra work on our part. Really, really cool. Now, if showing is set to true by default, so let's set this equal to true, and I refresh the page, Notice that by default, the transition effect doesn't take place. It's only gonna work when we toggle it on and off. So if you want the transition effect to take place by default when this first loads, then we can add in here on the Q slide transition, appear. And that means by default, it's going to appear. So if I refresh the page, that effect takes place. Really cool stuff. What else can we do? We can also say here the duration of this effect. For example, if we want it to be painfully slow, we can set it to 5,000 milliseconds. One, whoop, let's toggle it off. Oh my goodness, that is painfully slow. <gasps> oh, and it's gone. <laughs> so you can set the duration like that. Oh, it's also worth pointing out, we can use this with v-show, and let's change that duration. In fact, we'll get rid of it and use the default. Save it, and there we go. It works with v-show and with v-if. Now, an important thing to note here is that it's only going to work if you have a single DOM element. If I copy paste this down like this, save it, and then I'll refresh the page just to make sure this is extra proof. If I toggle this on and off, it's only showing one of those cards even though I've got two here. So that's kind of weird. And that's because Q slide transition, like I just said, only works with one child element. So let's just wrap this entire thing inside of a div and take V show, cut it, and I'm gonna remove it from there as well, and just put this on that first child element. Now we get both of them and the slide transition still works. How cool is that? And if you wanna know how to do more advanced transitions using multiple child components, then definitely check out the view documentation, not Quasar, but the view documentation and look at transitions. And they'll talk about transition grouping. And there's lots of really cool niche stuff that you can do there in terms of transition effects. But goes beyond the scope of this video. So let's move on. I just wanted to finish up with a really cool example of how you might wanna use the Q transition component. Imagine having a conversation component, kind of like at the bottom of YouTube, and you can see things that people have been saying, and then at the bottom of that conversation, you can then make your own comment, or even at the top, bottom, wherever you wanna put it. I'll show you what I mean. Let's say Q dash list, so we're going to have a list here, Q dash item, and then we'll have a Q dash item dash section. Now this section is going to be an avatar section, and then we'll have a Q dash avatar inside of there. And then I'll come in here 
And rather than in the avatar, we'll just throw this directly inside and set a Q dash image and set the source equal to HTTPS dot slash slash pixum.photos slash 80 by 80. So let's save that to begin with. And there we go. We've got an item with a picture in it. Next, I want to make this item clickable. Save it. So now we get that sort of um, clicking feel when we hover over it. And the last thing I'm going to do is add another q-item-section. And this is going to be a comment that somebody has made. At least that's what's going to rep what it's going to represent. So cool video. Thanks, man. Smiley face. And there we go. So that's an example of a comment that somebody might have made. And actually, honestly, it probably wouldn't have clickable. That's kind of weird for a comment. All right, so now let's copy paste this down. Do a couple more comments. And we'll change the image here. Maybe we'll go 90 by 90. And then in this one, we'll say, I liked it. Lots of useful info. Smiley face. Let's change that to useful spelled properly. I think that's how you spell it. Eh, I'm a coder. I don't know how to spell. <laughs> we'll make this 120 by 120. And then, thanks. I work hard on these. And then save it. There we go. So that's kind of an example of like a conversation stream. You can design that however you like. But this is the part that I wanted to point out. We can now have a Q dash item. And then inside of there have something like a Q dash button. And then what I could do is set the label equal to reply. And then how about we come in here and say class is equal to full dash width, save it. And then maybe we'll say no dash caps here to make it more understated and maybe flatten it out. There we go. So when you click on this button, it's going to open a box where you can then do your reply. And we're going to use the Q slide transition to just give it a really nice effect. So I'll come down here and instead of showing, let's change that to replying. Now I can come up and how about we say at click, replying is equal to true. And I'll make sure that's false by default. Yeah, so let's make it false by default. You need to click on that button to actually initiate the reply. And then I'll also come in here and say V dash show is equal to replying and not replying is what we'll do there. So if they are not replying, if we don't have that replying window open, then I don't want to show the button. All right, so next I'm going to add underneath here another Q dash item and inside of there will be a Q dash input. And this wouldn't necessarily have to be in a Q item. We'll just see what it looks like. And we'll set the type equal to text area. Now to make it more visible, I'll say it's filled and set the background color equal to something like gray dash two. Let's save it and see what that looks like. All right, so we've got this text area. Maybe I won't put it in an item because that's making it a little bit thin. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And then what I can do is say only show this if we are in replying mode. Okay, so now when I click on here, replying will be set to true. Therefore, the button will hide and the input will be displayed. So let's try that and it works. Cool. Now we need to make it so that this can disappear and we're just kind of going to fake sending the message through. So I'm not going to do all the logic to add it to the list here. This is just going to be to show you the slide transition component. So let's say at key up and then we'll say dot enter. So that's a way of saying if the enter key has been pressed, then what are we going to do? Let's set replying equal to false. All right. And therefore the input will no longer be visible. And once again, as you can imagine, this would probably send like an Ajax request, your backend server. And then when it gets like a true result back, then it will hide it uh, and then show it inside of this list. But we're not going to do all of that logic. All right, so we can click on reply and we can say my reply, press enter. And then that's mimicking it being sent through. Now, all we have to do to give a better UI experience here is wrap this inside of a Q dash slide dash transition. Enter, save it, and now check this out. We get that really nice transition. Send this, enter, and it disappears. So I think that's a really nice effect. And all we had to do was wrap it inside of this component. And maybe you want like more of a snappy feeling to your application, but you still want animation. 
that's where you might use something like duration and set it to something like 100 milliseconds. There we go, it's super fast, but it does animate a little bit there. So you can sort of see that it's being displayed. I think that's really cool. And there you have it. That's Quasar's slide transition component. So I hope you enjoy this one as much as I enjoyed making it for you, as I always do with these videos. See you in the next one where we'll dig into something else.